In another month of playing catch up on my most anticipated releases, I only managed to play two JRPGs in April, but feel like I played a lot as I managed to really jump into both of them. I finished two of one's releases endings and found out I may not have loved it as much as I hoped, but in contrast fell in love with another release in spite of its shortcomings and have remained completely addicted to it ever since that will likely see me play it into this month as well. So with that and another slightly quieter month of games coming up, here are the JRPGs I played and April. I had hoped that Rune Factory 5 would be even half as addictive as 4 was, and in spite of some of its issues with frame rate and the occasional crash, I haven't been able to put down the very fun Rune Factory 5 since I started playing it mid last month, and I'm enjoying my leisurely pace through its story, learning more about the town and all the small moments of farming and conversation in between. I'd be reminded of exactly why I loved 4, with Rune Factory's slow pacing intentionally letting you get to know the characters and enjoy town life at a relaxed pace, and with so much to do from farming, crafting, crafting, selling items, and even making an army of woolies, it's been great embracing all the extra moments in between the main story that has once again completely pulled me in. And after an imperfect experience with the next game I'll be talking about, it's almost felt like a nice vacation that's made up for things being so hectic over the last few months, and it's honestly made me want to go back and look at the other entries in the series when I get a chance, as it's just so enjoyable. I'm still playing at the moment, although I'm in the second half of the story, and planning to review at least one new release this month, so I'm not planning to to go too slow in my journey and hope to have a review for it up in the near future, especially since so far I think it's imperfect but manages to make up for it in so many ways. For now though, I'll be getting back to my Wooly Rune Factory 5 journey to have a lot more fun and I can't wait to continue playing in its relaxing town again soon. If you've seen my recent review of Monarch, you'll know that the second half of my experience wasn't exactly what I had hoped, and it was April where I discovered this fact, grinding my way through battle after battle to try and keep up with its difficulty spikes that in the end saw me putting it down two endings in, and while I have actually considered picking it up again a couple of times even after filling myself in on what the true ending is, when I think of the tens of hours of grinding, I decide not to, as I really have no desire to go through the same repetitive experience again. I tried really hard to love Monarch and do have some love for its concepts and characters as those were parts of it I liked. But I also remembered at the beginning of April looking at the days passed by as my limited gaming time during the work week felt like it was being spent doing the same thing over and over again and not making much progress in the grind and knowing that I'd have to do more the next day too. At first I tried to keep loving it in spite of this, finding appreciation in its gear collecting and skill trees, but it was when the first route I chose ended and I got into the next one that the repetitiveness really started started to hurt, and when it came time to pick a third ending route to go through, I decided I just couldn't anymore, especially knowing I had games like Rune Factory 5 waiting for me that I was super excited for, so I put Monarch down and had the two endings I got be where my Monarch story finished. If you want to hear more in detail the things I liked and didn't like about Monarch, my review is up now if you haven't seen it already that goes into the many things I loved and didn't about this experience that I recommend watching if you're thinking about picking it up, especially since my first impressions were much more positive. Since then, I'm happy to look back at the bits I did like about it now that I got everything off my chest in my review, like enjoying the Vanitas plushie I got or listening to the vocal tracks from its boss battles. But I also hope that the next game we see from its director, or even Monarch itself if it becomes a series, improves on the things that people didn't like in its first entry as it really did have a lot of potential to be great. But nevertheless, it will be a memorable experience for 2022 for me, whether for best or worst, as I remember this interesting gameplay experience. May is another quieter month for JRPGs again, although there are a few things to play, especially if you're still backed up from earlier months, and for me, it looks like it's going to be a lighter, harder one with the experiences I'll choose to play. The highly anticipated First Aid and Chronicle entry Rising will be coming out this month that I'm sure will interest many of you guys when it comes out on the 10th, but at the moment I'm still playing Rune Factory 5, which is more of a priority for me, so I don't know if that's one I'll end up playing, but I hope to hear more about it from you guys to see if it's worth
worth trying later. There's also one release that's caught my eye this month, which is the highly ridiculous Seven Pirates H on Switch, which is in the same Genkai Toki universe as Moe Ro Crystal H that I found quite funny last year. I didn't intend on coming back to the series, but it was kind of fun, and I found a lot of the screenshots I saved on my Switch of the lines I liked very amusing when cleaning out my Switch gallery while playing Arceus. So since I'm enjoying lighter experiences right now, I may give it a try when it comes out on the 12th, and I think doing that will be a bit of silly fun, especially before bigger and more reputable releases come out later in the year. Whether you play something good or goofy this month, regardless, the gaming year continues with some interesting releases that I hope are worth playing or at least adding to the ever-growing backlog. As usual, I hope you all enjoy whatever you end up playing in another fun month of playing great games as I personally get back to Rig Bar to enjoy farm life again and hope you guys enjoy whatever world you're jumping back into as well. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what you played in April and what you plan to play this month. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whatever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!